Hello and welcome back. In this video I'm going to be making these three stools and they're made out of steel and leather. I got the initial idea for these stools from seeing a camping stool at the flea market that I actually bought but it was very old and weathered. It was made out of wood and canvas. It wasn't even strong enough to be sat in but I liked the idea and the dimensions. I made mine here a little bit bigger. I first designed the leg pattern in Illustrator and I converted it into a cutting path for the plasma torch that you see here operating. I made three stools because I thought a set would look better on camera. And the other reason is I knew that these would be something that people might want. So I just wanted to make a few of them to really understand the process of making them. Because if you make one thing, you make it that way. If you make three things, if you're perceptive, you'll keep trying to find shortcuts and improvements in the construction process. And that happens invariably, especially if this is something you practice often. So right off of the plasma cutter, I, I took them to the sander off camera and cleaned them up and actually baked them in a forge. And that was really just to create some texture on there. So the texture that you see me just polishing up is really from putting the, uh, the legs into a forge and heating them up. And the entire time I'm just thinking what's next. I'm thinking how, uh, how, how I'm going to assemble them. And from this step, the next thing I do is I remount the holes. So each one of those holes was intended to be for three quarter inch rod and then five eighth inch rod. Now it's funny, we're here on the leather channel and this whole concept was born out of this beautiful hide that I got from Weaver Leather. I believe it's a bridal, bridal leather? Maybe I'm saying that wrong. But it's a beautiful piece of hide. From time to time the guys at Weaver send me over a couple of different hides and I really get inspired by seeing the beautiful different hides and the various thicknesses. and. This was so thick I knew it couldn't be used for a wallet or anything. I just knew that it would have to be used as a seat or a piece of furniture or something something bigger because the, it's an 8 ounce, 9 ounce hide and you can't really make a wallet out of something this thick. It's almost like, it's almost like construction material in the way that like a piece of plywood is a construction material. And so that's, that was really what, what I was thinking when I first got this this beautiful hide that you'll see in a few minutes. So now here I am, I'm just cleaning up the rust and getting rid of all the, the debris on there. And now I'm ready for my assembly. And like I said, I'm gonna make three of them. So I start out with the first one, tapping it together, getting to know the material that I cut and how it fits together, how each piece relates to one another. Just little tack welds in the process of just thinking it through tapping it together. The whole time I'm, I'm thinking of relationships, how the rods that hold the seed are both the same length, but the legs for each side sit differently. You'll notice what I mean, how the rod sticks out the width of the other leg further than that other leg. Make sense? Here I am thinking how wide can I make the seat? The wider I make the seat, the lower to the ground it is, the higher I make the seat, the, the less leather I use. So just trying to find a nice balance the entire time and thinking it through. And the entire time knowing that when I make this seat, this is going to be the reference for the first batch. And if I make more, I'll look back at this and make better decisions or keep the decisions the same that I, that I find that maybe I'm happy with. Second one goes together easily. Oh, this is actually the third one. And now I'm um, just tapping them and because they are metal and they did get heated, the metal is all a little bit deformed, not, not critically, but tapping things so it folds closer and looks better. And, and you'll notice I made the offset scissor pattern and that's so these legs would close closer together. And now this is a blackener to blacken the metal. That wire in there was also to keep the seats from collapsing the frames from collapsing, but also gave me a, a bit of a perspective on how much leather I might need. The seat is 12 inches deep and the piece of leather I used was 21 inches. 
and you can see how quickly that blackener works. It oxidizes and continues to oxidize. So you could arrest the oxidation process by just putting distilled water on it, which I didn't do. So it continued to oxidize. By the end of the video, you'll see it gets a little bit chalky. And any stage of that oxidation, you know, is, is, can be preferential for whoever it's for. I'm just trapping it with a clear coat. Now it's time to put the leather on there. Now this is that beautiful hide that they sent me. And right away, I was intimidated by it. Because you have this beautiful piece of material. You want to honor it. You, you don't want to waste it. You want to make sure it gets used for something that you'll be proud of. And that people will be happy to experience whatever it is, a wallet or whatever. Like I said, I treat most of this material just like construction material. The way, the way that I handle wood and plastics and glass, leather is just another one of those things. This little guy wants to eat. Either that or he's super excited about the stools. I think it's the stools. And from a cinematic point of view, I'm just always moving the camera around just so it does not get boring. And now if you notice what I put on the table, I put stoppers so that I could maintain the scissor action of the stools upside down. And I personally tend to like to use PVA glue. It's water soluble, it cleans up easy. Barge glue is definitely uh, something you could use. But barge glue, you gotta clean it with a solvent, and that, that I don't like. Now you notice I had to put those little chunks of wood up underneath there just to get that pinch tighter. Everybody's trying to get in touch with me, the cats, text messages. But now here I'm really, really, really uh, starting to see this come together. And I could have stitched this, but that would have been a lengthy process. And stitching by hand is certainly a possibility, but I knew the rivets would look a little bit more masculine, a little bit more aggressive, which is, tends to be my style, especially when I'm doing leather and steel. And these beautiful copper rivets, which I tend to use for pretty much almost every project, really comes together to make the material. So we have three materials. We have copper, leather, and steel, which really look nice. It's really important, get yourself a bench block these are all just scraps of steel that I get at a local steel mill here. It's kind of like the steel lumber yard. And they also do custom manufacturing of construction components, like door archways, and you know, they provide various blanks for factory machining. So they have a room with leftover pieces. And I go there often, and that's why you see me have a lot of these chunks. And they're great because I have different sizes. I don't always have to put the same piece of steel under my project. It might not conveniently fit, so I have ch different pieces to choose from. And you'll notice how I use them as clamps a lot. You see that piece off to the right there? I had folded it after doing the first one. I realized I need to train the leather. I need to get it accustomed to being in that shape, especially so that the, the glue will dry cleanly and it's not pulling away the entire time it's drying. Will you stop it? Now you see I have small, the smaller chunks there, about five by five by inch and a half thick. And I have all different shapes, rounds, tubes, and again, they're mostly just to provide clamping power and stopping power and, and hammering power for any projects that I use. And you'll notice to punch that hole, I had to telegraph that, the, the table up in the air with that two by six piece. Otherwise, you certainly couldn't have punched the hole. Here I'm getting experimental. Um, gluing each one of the rivets in and that was just to see if I could save time on the the second version of the assembly just seeing if I if I tap these together gently and then I lay them down and really drive them home if it would save me any time and it, honestly it really didn't I was just spent a lot of anxiety fumbling around keeping from dropping the rivets on the ground so by the third time I just go back to the original assembly process He's so excited about the stools, he can't, he can't contain himself. And so, I'm really digging these stools, and I had several inquiries about having them manufactured, and there is a manufacturing process, there's a manufacturing plant nearby that ma makes custom steel furniture. So, I brought one of the stools over to them so that they could take a, a, a guesstimate at a price. So I might make a batch of about 20, and we'll see. 
number two done. Now, if we may manufacture these, I might make those legs a little bit thicker. Right away, a few people commented saying that those legs are a little too small for a wooden floor, which is understandable. In my, in my environment, they would be on a cement floor, so that's what I was designing them for. But if I was going to make them for sale, we would have little feet that would be able to accept a leather or felt pad. He's trying to get outside now. He doesn't trust that I'm going to feed him, so he's trying to get out the door. And you see just the, the assembly there against those bricks just makes life so easy. And if you have neighbors downstairs or, or if you live in an apartment house, hammering against the steel brick will dampen the sound and, of course, give you much better results when you're trying to set a rivet. He agrees. And there we are. That's stool number three. And I did nothing to the leather other than cut it and punch a hole in it. I could have conditioned the edge, but I figured that would wear naturally. So thank you, Weaver, for giving me the opportunity to play and have fun with your materials. And thank you for watching. I hope you get inspired by this one. My little guy here is certainly inspired. Right, George? Yeah, he is. And I always like to put my name on everything. And I got that stamp made in Cleveland. That stamp yours. You could find them on Instagram. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Weaver. Thank you, George.